because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're here at the News Building at London Bridge. It's the start of a very big fight week. Joe Joyce versus Zilli Zhang. Dev Sani, how are you, mate? I'm good. Good to see you, Joe. Um, I've seen a lot of you recently across my social media feeds. I think you were with Big John Fisher the other day. It seems every time a camera's put in front of you, you start singing. You no, I don't. Good. I don't. You sound good, though. You've got, you've got something there. You, but you're actually in the band as well, aren't you? So you do actually sing. Well, I'm retired from that oh, now. Right. Yeah, yeah. OK, is it like sort of until December? Are you going to come back in December or are you fully retired? No, no, I'm, I'm yeah, fully right. retired, mate. I'm fully retired. I'm, I'm, I'm fully in the boxing world now, mate. But let's get to it then. Joe Joyce versus Zilli Zhang. A massive, massive heavyweight fight and kind of a big banana skin for Joe Joyce, as we know the next one could be the big world title fight. But just what do you make of the fight? Dangerous fight. He's, a, he's WBO mandatory and he can't afford to sit around now. He's 37 years old, so you can't be messing about and taking little tick over fights, even though you're you're going to get your world top shot eventually. You can get stale, you can get rusty. And he's picked a dangerous guy. Zilei Zhang, in my opinion, many people's opinion, beat Philip Hermitage. So he should be the mandatory challenger for Alexander Usyk anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I think for the first four or five rounds, Zhang will be particularly dangerous with that cannon of a, of a backhand that he's got. You know, he lays people to waste with that. He had Hermitage over, it wasn't with the, with the backhand, but he had Hermitage over, he's got power. But the general feeling is Joe Joyce catches up to him, withstands that, and juggernauts him late. But you just don't know. At some point, that chin's got to crack. Um, we've just got to hope it doesn't happen on Saturday. Is it his most dangerous fight today? No, I think Daniel Dubois was a more dangerous fight at the time. Daniel Dubois had all the momentum. Daniel Dubois was a favourite heading into that fight as well. Zhang is not the favourite heading into this. Um, and Joe yeah. Joyce boxed him with a lot of respect, kept him behind the jab. He didn't just walk forward like people thought. People just thought he was going to walk forward and Dubois would knock him out. But he relied on all that amateur pedigree that he's got, relied on his jab, and uh, well, we saw what happened in that fight. This is probably his second most dangerous fight. In terms of punching power, it's up there. I mean, um, Parker was a good fight, but he, sort of, he took his shots. Parker's not known for his power. Jan can bang, so uh, he needs to be careful in there. If Joe Joyce does succeed, as we all hope it does, and gets through on Saturday night, in your mind, is it just world titles or is it another big fight in the interim? Because we know it looks like Daniel Dubois next in line. We don't know what happens with Tyson Fury. So what will happen, do you think? I think he's just got to keep taking on credible good fights. This is a credible good fight. No one's telling him to, uh, to go and fight Gilles Zhang. You know, uh, it's not the sort of guy that you just pick out. Um, so yeah, I'd imagine it would be someone else who, who's really good. I don't know what's happening with Tyson, as you said, um, I'd love to see that fight one day, but Joe Joyce will just keep juggernauting um, his way to the top of the division. That's, that's his plan. I know once Usyk Fury initially broke down a couple of weeks ago, Joyce's name was banded about with him for the summer, but realistically, do you think that can happen next? I don't know. It's a question for Frank, for Tyson, and you know, be up to them, Tyson Fury is the, the boss at the end of the day, but um, I think that is a fight that everyone would, would love to see of course, and um, I think Joe Joyce now, he's entered the conversation where he's kind of in everyone's top five, it's just whereabouts you put him, um, and him mixing it with Usyk, Fury, Wilder, uh, Joshua, the, these are all fights that really sort of get your mouth walking, and I, I want to see him in those fights. Um, I'm not sure how much I want to see him in the wild if I, to be honest. I mean, that I, it's the ultimate sick sort of boxing experiment. Can his chin withstand Wilder's power? I know Joe Joyce, so I don't necessarily want to see him take it, uh, but I understand the sickness behind it. But I, I, I want to see him in big fights, and I, I think it's all coming. I know we've already spoke to you about the performance of Anthony Joshua against Jermaine Franklin, so we'll steer away from that. But after the fight, he said, look, Joe Joyce is a name that he does want in the future. Um, it's come out in the past couple of days that it's looked like he won't have three fights this year. He'll be fighting next in December. 
Shame that fight can't be happen, happened for summer and shame AJ isn't going to be out until then. Does he really want Joe Joyce? Be honest, does he really want that? I mean, what do you think Joe Joyce would have done to Jermaine Frank? You know what he would have done. I know what he would have done. A strange thing has happened here and, uh, you know, full, full respect to, to Anthony Joshua. It's good to see him winning again. Um, shame we're not seeing him again in the summer. Is he, is, he, is he clout chasing on the back of Joe Joyce's name? Is that what's going on? <laughs> there you go, there's one for the comments. But, um, no, I, I'd love to see that fight. Um, I think it's a fight that probably for the first time Joe Joyce starts as a favourite in. In fact he does, I've checked the odds on Skybet, someone's like, there's no way on Skybet you, you can have a look, he starts as a favourite in that fight. Is it in Anthony Joshua's interest to take a fight with Joe Joyce when there are uh, fights where he can make more money, potentially, Wilder probably making more money, Fury probably making more money? You don't necessarily, I don't know, you don't really look to jeopardise the, the future bag by taking on someone who could beat you. Um, and this, this whole December thing is is interesting. That, that feels like, I don't know, maybe he's got something big lined up in December and doesn't want to risk something happening to him in the summer. But if he's got something big in December, why wouldn't he fight in the summer as well? So, because it's heavyweight boxing, um, and anyone can chin anyone in heavyweight boxing, it depends how big the promise is in, in December, if, if he's even got one. If you fight someone like Billy and White in the summer, right? We, Who you we, said's avoided? I, I, I don't think he would fight Billy and White before, before a, a big, big one. Uh, it would be a great fight, be a, a great build-up. I just think his risk factor is just a little bit too high right now. I, I wonder what the odds would be in that. This version of Anthony Joshua gets this version of Dillian White. Um, and I just think the risk will be a tad too high. I think White's got a little bit too much dog in him still. Um, and, and you don't want necessarily a, a real live one in front of you. Jermaine Franklin was a live lead, but he was never going to hurt Anthony Joshua. Dillian White will stick it on him at the presser, stick him on him at the weigh-in and come to take his head off. Franklin didn't really do that. So uh, I don't think you, you need a real live dog like that in front of you. I'd be quite surprised if they went for a Dillian White before the big, big ones. What's a bigger fight? Joe Joyce versus Anthony Joshua or Dillian White versus Anthony Joshua? Joe Joyce versus Anthony Joshua. Uh, I mean, for me, that's, that's you know, you've got an Olympic gold against Olympic silver. You've got the intrigue of an unbeaten British heavyweight who is now as I say, starting as the favourite against him. I think more people buy into that now because Joe Joyce is getting up there. His name is getting out there. And Dillian White, his name doesn't have that same heat that it once had. Joe Joyce is the hot product right now. I think if you announce that fight tomorrow, it would probably sell out the stadium. I think there's, there's no doubt about that. This is, a, this is the juggernaut's time and people want to see it. Just moving away from the top tier heavyweight, just going down and level, uh, David Adelaide and Fabio Wardley, uh, the big beef around Joshua Fight Week, there was more beef with that fight that's not even <laughs> happening yet than uh, the, the, the main event itself, but just what did you make of the fiasco of, of Twitter over the past couple of weeks, David Adelaide kind of turning up to confront Wardley <laughs> at the press conference? I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. I, I, I love Big D. I love it. Whoa. 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 <laughs> um, um, I was like, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What have I just walked into? Dev, Dev loves Big D. No, let's, let's probably tell that. But, um, no. We're not. Um, no. <laughs> not. Um, David Adelaide is, is the man. We, we, I'm going to use him this week around the way in. I'm going to have him and Hamza Shiraz with me when we do the live stream. And I like this idea of him pulling up. Fabio Ward did. He doesn't care whose press conference it is. He pulled up, he wanted to look yeah. into his eyes and see what he was about. And I think they both know what each other's about. And I think, um, for me, he's front of the queue for for the Wardley fight, for the for the British title. He's had more fights than the other two. I think uh, Fraser Clark and Solomon Dakers or Dakers? Dakers? Dakers. Dakers. Both fantastic fighters. You know, take nothing away from them at all. Especially Fraser Clark, who's got all that amateur pedigree. Um, but they're 6-0, right? so Adelaide is 11-0, so it feels like you, you come to him next. I could understand the arguments against that, but it feels like to me, obviously, that, that you've come to Adelaide next, and that's you'd get some real spice in the build-up. Fraser Clark and Wardley seem to be quite matey uh, around each other, from what I've seen. Um, Dacus doesn't seem to be saying an awful lot, but Adelaide and Wardley, you've got a great British beef 
heavyweight title. No, I love it. With that fight, though, is it bad for boxing that we're only at British level and kind of broadcast politics is already getting involved? Ignore it. Ignore it. I think. I think. Uh, I think that fight will get sorted out. I mean, um, if it's, it's going to be up to the board, right? So the board will. If they stick Adelaide in as a mandatory, then either they do a deal, a match room in Queensbury, or it goes to purse bids and I bid a wins, and then it can be on, on either channel. But I don't know, I, I, yeah, I, I wasn't particularly fond of hearing that kind of chat. Um, certainly not, as you say, British type level. We just, want to, we just want to see them fight at this point. Last one, stick your promoter's hat on like uh, I know you like to do, Dev. Um, just run through the card. We've got Michaela Mao, we've got Sam Noakes. It's a stacked card at the Copper Box on Saturday night, isn't it? Well, obviously, so top of the bill, Joe Joyce, Sile Zang. I mean, two, uh, two Olympic silver medalists chasing gold as professionals. Can't wait for it. Two massive fellas. Both can give away, both can take away. Can't wait for that. Um, Michaela Mao, back in London. The Mayor of London. Yeah, she's back. And uh, she's sort of trolling Alicia Bongarda. Right, because she is taking on the only fighter that has beaten Alicia von Gardner. So she wants to make a bit of a statement in there. She wants to be like, okay, Alicia, you didn't want to fight me in the rematch, look what I'm doing to the girl that's beat you. Yeah? That's what that's what she wants to say in there. Denzel Bentley, British title defence, where's his head at? He's just given Yanebeck help, right? Gave him a really good fight and now he's dropping back down to British level. What's the motivation like for Denzel Bentley? I want to find out. And Kieran Smith, he thinks he can hurt him in there. Can he? He's moving up from Super Welter. I'm very interested in that fight. Sam Noakes, 10 and 0, 10 knockouts, taking on Karthik Kumar. 10 and 0, 2 knockouts, I think. So um, I, I, I favour Sam Noakes in that fight to, to power on through. And yeah, Moses to tell me, mate. I mean, this geezer's just the future of the heavyweight division. He's been sparring all of them. They all say very good things about him. And um, get a glimpse of a future world heavyweight champion. Have a look. Get the police while he does. Nothing but white designs around me. That's what they all do, on and off camera. Um, but yeah, looking forward to it, mate. Be tuned in, BT Sport, this Saturday, 7 o'clock, and um, I'm trying to get the prelim bouts on Queensbury YouTube as well. So I'm trying to get that sorted out. Dev Hearn, thank you very much for being to <laughs> IFL TV. <laughs> do not be first. Do we do an off? Well, I never shot up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. Win it, their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 